just a real quick uh, synopsis from a U.S. government required disclaimer. Trading futures, options, or any leveraged instrument has large potential trading losses as well as potential rewards. This is neither a solicitation or offer to buy or sell futures, option, or any instrument of leverage. Past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Use of any of this information is entirely at your own risk, for which trend following trades, LLC, its affiliates, employees, or owners will not be liable. All information exists for general educational purposes only. We are not registered trading advisors. So I want to thank again everybody for attending. Uh, please don't hold us back for our ugly looks, except for my lovely wife, Sylvia. <laughs> um, we do like to put faces with names, though, uh, in this day and age. It's easy for people to hide uh, behind uh, who they are, where they live, uh, heck, what country they're from. So we like to put uh, faces with who we are. Uh, we like to show you that uh, we are all, uh, we all have a, a stake in the game, a rather large stake. These are, we are the three owners looking here, myself, Lance, and Sylvia, of Trend Following Trades. Um, Lance is our C-sharp programmer. He does all the programming. Uh, we do not sub that out. Uh, he's also a trader. Uh, I myself uh, have designed a lot of, or most of all, what you see here from a conceptual standpoint. Um, I am, you know, a trader, uh, a full-time trader as a living. And Sylvia trades herself, and she's also the administrator behind the scenes person that does everything uh, that falls between the cracks that she can catch. Um, we don't sub anything out really, a little bit of hard, high-end website work that we can't figure out. And we just want you to know that as a company, uh, we don't have any smoke and mirrors. A lot of companies out there do. So we have a phone number. When you go to our website of contact, we show you our physical address. And uh, feel free to contact us. We are East Coast uh, Standard Time, Eastern part of the United States. So um, please keep that in mind um, when calling us. You can email us anytime. We also do Skype, a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings, training sessions, trading sessions, things of the sort. Uh, and by the way, anytime anybody has any questions, uh, just type them in. We'll eventually get to them. During this presentation, I'll be discussing the Trend Following Trades methodology, the training tools and available indicators. I'll also talk about our new patent-pending Trend Following Trades Advanced Market Administrator. Wow, that's a mouthful. It's the AMA2, or in, in, in abbreviated, we call it the TFT AMA2. As you'll see shortly, this is a very unique and powerful trading platform interface uh, with NinjaTrader 7. And it's exclusive, it's exclusively interfaced to NinjaTrader 7. Okay. Also, at the end of this webinar, we'll be offering uh, special pricing uh, for select packages of the Lifetime uh, CT2. It's the chart trading version of this and the AMA2. Uh, so please hold off uh, to any unrelated questions um, until we get through the presentation. And we'll have a little Q&A at the end, as long as Patrick will be nice enough to uh, let us stay on uh, this channel. Uh, we really appreciate it. And again, Patrick and NinjaTrader, thank you very much for uh, letting us be part of this and for helping us put this on. We really do appreciate your help on that. Um, let me just go through here. And also, uh, Lance and Sylvia may be answering some questions. So if you ask a question, you see an answer from Lance or Sylvia, um, you know why and you know who they are now. <laughs> okay, um, understanding the concept behind trend following trades trading method. I'm going to be reading from some of these slides because I think it's best a lot of times when people talk, you don't, uh, it's been my experience, people don't always understand. And when you put a bunch of text up, people don't always read. So I'm going to try to do both. We have a small lot of time frame, so I'm going to try to get to the meat and potatoes first. Um, Trend Following Trades LLC as it exists today is a developing company. It's been around for a while, but we're constantly developing as any company needs to in this industry. And it's seen many phases of growth and transition. Uh, with the power of computer hardware and software, uh, you know, in the market and being created today, complicated entries can now be drawn in by the computer in an instant with specific accuracy and trades be taken automatically. You know, this is what is possible nowadays, okay? With this ability comes an important question. Are these trade results, you know, and you can also plot the results from the trades. Are these trade results based on mathematical optimized random formulas, or are they based on existing trading method with optimized components? And this may sound like an obscure question, but the reason I ask it is um, we teach people how to trade from the bottom up, 
meaning when you come when you join trend following trades you learn how to be a discretionary trader become a discretionary trader and once you become a discretionary trader a lot of people like that it's kind of like teaching somebody how to fish um, once you go beyond that or get to that then we jump up to the AMA2 which I'll get into later is a more advanced tool that allows you to look at and trade multiple markets um, and only the ones that are doing certain things at certain times to increase your odds of success by only trading the markets that are doing what you want them to do at the time you want to trade, not the other way around. Um, the third is to be able to take that uh, method and strategize it or automate it. And a lot of people miss that last step. Today, it's very possible. There are some caveats to it, which I'm going to explain. You're not going to hear this a lot from a lot of people a lot of companies uh, like trend following trades in a presentation like this, but you're going to hear it today. And it's called pure honesty. And I think it's important because this is, I don't know where, and I'm not going to spend the time to say, what are your experiences? You're trading futures, you know, you're trading stocks, whatever. Um, I'm here to make a presentation and to enlighten uh, those that may be new or those that have may have lost a lot of money or spent a lot of money in this industry as to what is out there and why. And I, I like to talk about the latter of these two possibilities when it comes to automation. And the latter is the key to success. Taking a method and automating it uh, is really what you want to do. Because this way, when the trades, I'll use the term fire off, you know whether it's a trade that should be taken or not because it's nothing more than automating what you trade through discretion and, you know, with a bunch of rules applied and things like that. Okay. Um, the hard part is actually programming it. And trust me, Lance and I have been going through this for quite some time, a uh, year, two years, let's say year and a half, two years of actual programming. And um, it's difficult as a discretionary, successful discretionary trader you take, you don't realize how much you take for granted in the decision making that you do. Uh, that's very difficult for a computer to do. The more global aspects of the trading decisions that you make, not the very specific ones, the more global ones. Computers uh, find that hard to pick up. You know, like all the other markets are moving, or um, you've got some terror activity going on, uh, and the markets are sensitive to that. So, you know, it's uh, computer programs have a hard time picking that up. News is not always predictable, meaning good news can be bad, bad news can be good, and it's not always the same way. So news feeds aren't predictable either, okay? So, you know, but everything today can be automated or strategized, ninja trader term, and uh, we should stick with it. Uh, results aren't 100% of discretionary uh, traders' results, but there are other benefits when you automate something, and that is you remove emotion uh, from trading. Uh, we teach people how to trade, and a lot of people don't like when I use these terms, and I'm sorry for those that don't, but as far as I'm concerned, trading in a simulator, it, especially the Ninja Trader, uh, Ninja Trader Simulator, it emulates market, real money market conditions really well, both fills on entry and exit uh, with the delays built in and, and customizable and things like that. It is one of the most powerful educational tools that I've ever uh, come across for trading. Uh, however, it is a game. It's a video game. It's like learning, you know, how to play uh, whatever uh, the most advanced, uh, sophisticated video game you can think of is. Um, but it's like an online game where you're playing against a real opponent. Now, think about mastering that game. That is our job is to teach you how to master this game of playing the market. Um, the difference, though, is once you master the game and we have a plan laid out on how you can do all this. Uh, and for how long you should be able to do it before you trade real money. Um, because once you trade real money, it's no longer a game. Uh, those points are no longer points. They're now dollars. So the real trading starts once you've learned a method and you can and you should be able to completely trade it in your sleep. Someone should be able to throw a dart at a board and say, okay, what are you going to do now? And without thinking about it, you should know whether you're going to exit manage a trade, or reverse. Um, three simple functions. And you should be able to know in an instant, millisecond in your mind, what you're going to do by looking at a chart or, in this case, the AMA. The emotional part of trading, for those of you that have traded real money know this, and for those of you that haven't, uh, trust me when I tell you this, is the most difficult part of trading. 
Learning how to trade is second. Dealing with real money emotions is first. Okay, and if you don't know that, uh, you will find that out when you go to try to do it. Also here, chart trading is still an important part of trading. We talk about the AMA2, again, which you'll see. It's something very unique, uh, something you'll never see anywhere else. Uh, it's patent pending technology, okay? But you still need to learn from a chart. And so we all, you know, we teach people how to trade and the, we teach people the trend following trades method using a chart. Some people never leave that. They, they like charts, they stick to that, and that's what they stay with for the rest of their lives or for, you know, it's about 50% of our member base. And that's fine. Um, the other half like to stick with cutting edge technology and automation is part of the AMA, um, not part of the, the, the chart trading package. They want to, you know, tag onto that as much and as fast as they can. So they, you know, stick with the AMA too. Um, what's one of the unique features about it is it allows you to watch up to 12 markets. And when I say watch, I mean, monitor, execute, manage trades and everything all on one 1080p monitor. If you think about that, it's a standard uh, 1080p monitor, 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution. It's a standard HD monitor. It could be any size, you know, 19 inch up to 32 inch. Um, they're kind of the extremes when it comes to trading, but uh, I myself use multiple 23 and 24 inch monitors. Not all for trading, but support monitors, things like that, and um, also used for stocks and options and stuff like that. Um, so let me just uh, move along here. Um, okay. Um, don't, wh one thing I hear all the time, and I just actually got an email, uh, quite a strange email. Um, let me just take a break here. There's some questions going by. I can only see, just so you know, I can only see a few questions at a time. Let me just adjust this window here so I can probably see some more. Um, one of the, one of the questions that I get a lot is, uh, you know, can you show me a record of your day trading or I only have an hour. This is the, this is the better one. This is a more relevant one. I have an hour a day to trade. Um, what market do you suggest I day trade? And I often tell people much to their disappointment that, um, I suggest that they not day trade. Uh, often the hour that they have is during uh, a time where the market doesn't move, um, you know, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. or 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern, let's say, you know, your or your time, whatever. Um, and I asked him, I said, have you ever considered swing trading? One of the biggest misunderstandings or the biggest misteachings and people push is that you do not need to day trade to be a successful trader. Uh, as a matter of fact, swing trading is far easier. And it is, um, there, there's a common saying out there that if you can't make it swing trading, you'll never make it day trading. Day trading is one of the hardest things in the world to do. Uh, it's right up there with brain surgery and things like that. That's why there's a very low percentage rate of successful traders. When I say successful, I mean people that make a living at trading, okay? Um, if you look here though, one thing that's nice about trend following trades is to the left, you're looking at a day trading chart of crude oil. Okay, we call this a six wick Renko. This is a type of price bar that we use, uh, which we supply. It's not a standard uh, feature of NinjaTrader 7, but uh, we do supply it. And then here on the right side, you're looking at a Forex chart. It could be a future also, Euro US dollar of a 15 wick Renko, but this is a swing trading time frame, And that's when we go to Forex is we recommend Forex for swing trading. The spreads in here can be a little bit wide for day trading. So uh, we, we recommend swing trading. Also, the leverage of full-size futures trading is quite high. So you'd need a very large account to swing trade it. So Forex is great for swing trading. And each vertical white line you see here is a day. But notice, same tools, um, same rules, basically, whether you're day trading or swing trading. So... Um, that's one beautiful thing about trend following trades is we same rules, same tools. Uh, for the most part, uh, everything we teach is applicable to day trading and swing trading, whether it's futures, Forex stocks, or the options on the underlying. Explore the new CT2 benefits as a day and swing traders, uh, what we just discussed. The upgrade in the, in the chart trader uh, is quite a large one. 
Uh, I'm just going to kind of breeze through this and discuss it. We used to have, didn't used to have a lot of these tools, I should say. We now have automatic support and resistance. You'll see these green and red lines here. Um, these are generated from left side prior. We call these swing points. There's a lot of different names that people give for similar items. These are highs and lows in the market, and they actually come in. We, you can put as many of these uh, on the chart as you want. When I say these, I mean time frames. We happen to put three on. We put a slow, medium, and long-term time frame, and we color them red, blue, and black. You only happen to see red here on the in these charts. Uh, probably not, not too wise on my decision, but in any case, you get the idea. These are the highs and lows in the swing. And then if we had medium and long, you'd see you know one at, at the high. And if I showed you a chart that had more price action in it, you'd see you know blue and black. Um, these support and resistance lines come off of the left-hand side. They come from these swing points, okay? And a lot of you are going to say, well, you know, wh why support and resistance, you know, or where do you get it from? And why not Fibonacci and things like that? Well, we don't believe in Fibonacci because it's too discretionary. Too many people look at Fibonacci and they say, okay, my start point's here or my start point's here. Or depending on what time frame you're looking at, um, it could be in a different place. And then they use different percentages, 50, 66. So it's a very discretionary tool. You know, what is your high and your low and what is your midpoint? So what we use is we use left side swing highs and lows. And all your support lines are going to be green and they'll never change. And all your resistance lines are going to be red and they'll never change. Um, they will end. They will self-terminate. You notice this red line self-terminated once they pass through so many bars of price that you determine ahead of time. And it's an indicator input. And the reason we do that is once they pass through so much price, it, basically it's just a congested area at that point. And the reason we do this also is you can look at a Wick Renko chart, you can look at a range bar chart, you can look at a tick chart, volume chart, time chart, uh, you can look at a bunch of charts. In the past, these points will never change. An hourly chart, things of the sort, um, no matter who looks at this chart or what kind of time frame they're using, chances are many of these support and resistance lines will be seen. And the more traders that see the same thing, the more price reacts to those areas. And that's the key. It's not what we do at those areas that matters. It's that when people see those areas, they react to them. All right. And that means more volume at price at a given point in time. And it doesn't change over history. So moving to the right, uh, these lines carry to the right. Now, I didn't plot them here. Actually, I did. I'm sorry. You see these red lines. I made them really thin, so they didn't clutter up the chart. But these are resistance lines. As this move comes down, you'll notice price bounces off of these resistance lines. Okay, Coming up here, price bounces off these support lines. So this diamond here and this arrow, these are perfect entries um, as support and resistance. Also, we have this line here. We call this our trigger line. Um, it's a it's an area, and you know I'm just going to tell you it's a it's a sophisticated moving average that we use, and we want to cross below and come back above it. And there's kind of an entry. We have momentum, a hybrid momentum indicator, um, and it has a chop zone where anything that happens in between is kind of like a ball rolling on a table. It really doesn't have any momentum. The minute it comes outside the chop zone, it has momentum and direction. So, and then we have a divergence uh, plotted here. Uh, these are indicators. We both have standard divergence, extended divergence, uh, hidden divergence, reverse divergence, and inside out divergence, which is the hidden reverse type, which it'll plot uh, over these white bars inside here, which I'll show you later. Uh, but in any case, what this green line is, while we plot a green, the trigger line, is this is our cumulative delta. We're the first, and I think the only, that's been able to take NinjaTrader and plot cumulative delta, but we don't do it just from the beginning of the day. We can do that. We now do it from any point in time uh, using swing points. So we happen to be plotting this now off of a swing point, middle range swing point, and that's the blue dot you don't see in here, but we keep like a library of net long, net short, uh, where the orders go off at the bid and ask. So we can tell at any point in time whether the market is net long or net short, and we never really like to trade against this. 
We also like to see it pointing up when we go long and down when we go short. But notice here, there's a lot of green in here going short. Again, the, the least important thing is the color of this. The most important thing is the direction. So it's not an absolute. It's more of a we like to see it our way. Um, oh, you cannot see anything. Uh, I just want to see here. Okay. Um, is Just a quick question. Is what it is? Is that what is a cumulative? Uh, well, actually, the green line is a, I, I couldn't even explain it to you, and nor would I want to get into specifics. Let's just call it a, it's called our trigger line. We use it for entries, uh, certain types of entries, and we want to see price pull back into it or near it. And um, we also now color it. We used to have another way of determining swing cumulative delta, not daily, you know, not, not from the market open. We can control this, and we reset it constantly throughout the day. Um, but we now color the line, so you no, need to lo no longer need to look somewhere else, which I'll show you that too. All right. Um, let me get to just jump on here, because like I said, we're um, okay. Now you can decide to let's see what happens here. Let's do here from this one. All right. Hang on a second here. This uh, PowerPoint's just giving me a, a headache here. And from current slide, I don't know why this does this. There we go. All right. Um, <coughs> excuse me. One thing we also do is um, I personally have been burned in the past prior to my life in futures. I've been burned in the past trading stocks. Um, highly leveraged uh, positions, you know, 1,000 shares, 10,000 shares, depending on the price. And twice I've blown out two accounts many years ago um, on highly leveraged positions on stock halts. <laughs> and I swore after the second one that I'd never trade a stock again. Well, I do, but I trade them using options. And I just want to let you know that we, this is just a, a, a showing you a, a it's, it's a, an Excel spreadsheet that just depicts uh, an options chain that I just want to talk about briefly that shows you the strike price. Um, it doesn't match this chart, but basically what we do, if you, you know, th this shows you that we're plotting uh, Apple, um, you know, common stock that a lot of people trade. Um, it has penny spreads on the options, which is a really great way to trade. And this white line here is a uh, day break. A session break okay so I personally like to day trade options into swing trades so if I can get an entry up here uh, early enough actually going to sell here and then carry it throughout the day and then to have a partial profit we believe in trading three lots take two off two-thirds your position at a minimum of two to one your original stop target and then I like to carry the last third position overnight if it seems like that's the general direction that things are heading and I have room to keep going, I will take that position into a swing trade. Uh, we have, which I'll show you later on, a uh, tool that automatically calculates the Wick Renko size for you, depending on the stock that you're trading, uh, the volatility and range. So the, uh, for those of you that are new to options, you have a strike price, and basically it's similar to a static Superdome where you have a bid and ask. You can, uh, you know, buy at the ask on a put side and a call side. Call means you're expecting the stock to go up. A put means you're expecting the stock to go down. And the strike price essentially really is a bunch of different price levels that you can, you know, buy a call or buy a put. We don't like to get into spreads or selling any complicated. This is level one options. We basically buy a call to go long, buy a put to go short. We look at, and all they call these the Greeks, but we like to look at the delta, and we really like to start at somewhere around 0.5, which essentially means that when you get in, and, and they're, they're pretty inexpensive options when you get to this level, uh, essentially means that for every dollar the stock moves, uh, the option's going to move 50 cents. Uh, one option's 100 contracts, so you get the idea. If the stock moves a dollar, the option uh, is going to increase the value by half that. But the your Risk is fixed in size, and um, it really uh, is the way to go as far as I'm concerned when it comes to trading stocks. 
versus trading the actual underlying. It costs a far, far, far less, and it's the way to go uh, using this wonderful uh, NinjaTrader platform with our tools, along with other things, futures you can do this in your retirement account, things of this sort. So anybody has any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask going there. Okay. Um, this is a calculator I was talking about. I had a scrunch, two monitors in here, but there's essentially four charts here. We're looking at, to the right here, this is a, an Apple daily chart. This is a, a, a 60 minute chart, an hourly chart, and this is our Wick Renko chart. Now you can see here, and each vertical white line here is a day. So you notice here, um, the daily, obviously each brick here is a day, okay? The vertical line here, white line is a day, and then same here. Notice how the one hour chart, um, you can see there's eight of them uh, per day, um, approximately. Uh, you know, it's hard, and these are actually our signaling system showing you on a daily chart. I didn't put all the indicators up um, just because I wanted to snap this picture, but um, it shows you the signals. And by the way, with all our signals come audio and visual plots. But the WIC Renko, and we provide these, it's kind of like a Renko bar, but it shows you the WIC, it gives you a WIC, which shows you where the price has been throughout the bar. And you can see how smooth everything is. And essentially, um, you know, green's long, red short, we color it orange. And again, this cumulative delta tells you a big story. But this is traded overnight, you know, traded overnight. We're not too far off here. Uh, the 23rd, this is very recent. Short position, short and short into the close, okay? Um, versus trying to deal with a daily chart, you know, this is really sloppy. Um, you know, bias is obviously to the downside here. So, you know, again, dealing with, a, I'm sorry, this is an hourly chart, then dealing with a daily chart, uh, there's so much more you can do with the Wick Renko chart. Uh, it in increases the accuracy of price action. It increases price action if you have it set to the proper settings. And this tool here, you just click on it, it automatically takes volatility and range into account and gives you the right Renko size for that day in trading. Now, if you're in a position, it doesn't matter. It, you can be, it can be a week old. It doesn't change that much. You know, if you're in a position to manage a position, just stay with the Renko size that you're in. And a daily and weekly charts don't change because it's daily and it's weekly. But the Renkos do according to the volatility and range. Um, what's the bottom oscillator? This is the Momo. Uh, we, it's short for momentum. It's a hybrid momentum. It is not a squeeze indicator. It's a very sophisticated hybrid momentum indicator that we can tell whether you know we're in buy or in sell, uh, whether we're diverged. You see this little green bar plotted here and here. That means there's a condition of divergence. Uh, we have rules that override this. You see it here too. We have rules that you know when we're in buy and divergence, we can go into sell, things like that. So this indicator tells us a lot. We also have a chop zone usually uh, that you'll see here, but when we swing trade, we don't use a chop zone uh, just because of the nature of the beast. Uh, you'd have to be changing chop zones for everything when here we just rapidly click through this, which I'll get through later if we have enough time. Um, again, one thing that's powerful, the AMA2, what you're looking at here is it's kind of deceiving. You're looking at six monitors, okay? This right here is one monitor. This is a second monitor, this is a third monitor, and there's three monitors on the bottom. So you're looking at three monitors on the top, three monitors on the bottom. Essentially, it's a picture, JPEG, showing 10 markets. Each chart here is one market. Um, and so there's two, two markets on this monitor, two on this monitor, two on this monitor, two here, two here. And then right here is the AMA with one chart. So there's 12 markets on this AMA. And then if I click on these things here, I know you can't see it right now, it's kind of small, but if I click on these, this chart will change to the market that I'm clicking on. And all these inputs are all, I'm sorry, all these visuals that you see here are related to this market. And there's only ever one chart being plotted. So we save a huge amount of real estate that can be used for other things. Or if you don't have it, you can kind of say you need it. And we can get an overall look of the market, indexes, currencies, commodities, bonds, whatever you want to look at, okay, which I'll get into again uh, more later. Um, what the AMA2 does, here's a little bit better picture of it. This is on one monitor. We have a two-thirds, one-third setup. Okay, again, you click here on the left side. And this will bring up the monitor of the current market. Um, what it does do, it lights up here for you. This says click to stop limit, click to stop market. So when this lights up, we would click it. It would place a stop limit order right here to go short. And then it would run using this ATM, 
right here. And it would manage your trade. And if you have chart trader uh, on, which we would, you would, you know, your chart trader would be up here. You could move your stop, move your target, uh, things of the sort. So you can actually run around and manage your trades. You'll have your PL pop up here when you're in a trade. When you're out of a trade, it'll show your closed PL. And this is kind of a global PL down here. And I'll show you what all the other buttons do. I'm actually going to try to get to running market replay. We're after close, you know, we're after market hours. So uh, it's kind of difficult to show you live market data except through market replay uh, when the market's closed. But it does give you direction prices. You read here means sell. It shows you the entry line, um, you know, and it's, it's a warning. It gives you a visual box here, which is a certain type of trade, a 4E. You can see this red means resistance above us. So that's actually why this trade's plotting. We have resistance above us. And here it's giving you what we call a method entry. We actually have it so you can enter at resistance. It decreases your stop size and decreases your distance to target. So this is some of the new stuff that the AMA, when this box lights up, when this picture was taken, it, it, it actually had surpassed already. or actually didn't hit it yet. Uh, you'll get this order flow uh, block to light up. That means that if you click on it, it'll invoke a strategy where we're actually going to click it and it's going to manage uh, the trade according to the strategy, um, which is very unique. Okay, so we're not running a strategy that manages uh, the market and every trade or everything it sees. It only manages the trade. It doesn't even take it for you. You just you, you highlight it and say, if a trade's coming up now, take it. You need to turn it on for a trade and it'll shut itself off after it's done. So it's a way to automate and take your emotion out of trading for this particular trade. You need to activate it. You really want to activate it before this turns on, or you could just click it when it lights up. Either way, it works um, you know, that way, and it works well versus you can also do this, your stop limit, uh, where you could take a trade at any time, or you could just mark it in by clicking these buttons here. If it's a little hard to read this. Click the market. You can go short. You can go long at any time. And before I was talking about cumulative market delta order flow, this green and this red, uh, this is where you used to see it. Uh, this means this red means that we're net short and we've now colored the line. OK, um, so you no longer need to look here to see cumulative market delta. Um, it can be shown uh, right on the chart. Um, the ultimate power of the AMA2 using the strategy buttons, all right, when they do light up and you do take a trade, this is when we went long, okay, it got long here at support. You'll see green means you're in a position. When it's orange, it means that you are in profit, and anytime you click this orange button, it will move the stop to break even for you automatically. Here it tells you your open PL, down here is your closed PL, okay. And when I snapped this picture, it might have been right when something was going on. Usually, actually, this is this top number. See, 50 and 50 or 40. Uh, this is your cumulative P&L open. And then there's a number beneath it that I cut off. That is your cumulative P&L closed. Also, this box here is a global close. When I click this box, it flattens everything. When I hit any of these individual markets, it flattens just that market. This is its own execution platform. It happens to be using NinjaTrader 7 as a data pump to give it all its information that it needs to execute orders and things of the sort. Okay, uh, These numbers back here tells you how many pullbacks you have in a mode change, like this green here is buy mode. So you can determine how many pullbacks. We do believe in Elliott Wave Theory, so we don't like to see large numbers in here because that tells us that we've had a lot of pullbacks in this case, they're not really waves, they're just pullbacks, but when you see a lot of long running waves and pullbacks, you know that Elliott Wave Theory uh, has been extended. We, we're wave three traders, meaning we don't pick tops and bottoms. We like to capture that middle third and we'll take any runners that uh, the market will give us, but we don't like to trade late in the game. We like to either trade with a trailer third contract or a third of whatever size you trade and um, or we like to trail mentally okay so um, let's get to some automation here uh, again if anybody has any questions please don't hesitate to type them in um, i do want to talk about this though um, as discretionary traders the one thing we don't do is because we have the ability to uh, automate uh, our trades um, People ask us this question, ask me this question all the time. Um, why 
do you trade manually in multiple markets, especially with the AMA2, um, when you have equity curves like this, okay, in almost all the markets that you trade? You know, we can generate an equity curve like this in pretty much all the markets with the, you know, with the proper time frame and things like that. So why? Why do you trade manually? in multiple markets with equity curves like this. And you're gonna see equity curves like this from other companies that have trades that they can uh, strategize. They will show you equity curves like this. And they're gonna say, we don't trade subjectively. We trade off of um, you know, markets and setups that are based off of non-subjective um, results. Equity curves like this, okay? Positive expecting equity curves. And if this is the case, then why do we trade this discretionarily? Okay, why not just unleash them all? That when they light up and when they, you know, say go long or go short, that the computer just takes them, uh, you know, within our, uh, um, how can I say, excuse me a second, within our, you know, ability to take trades, uh, you know, we don't want to, over trade size wise and things like that, you know, why trade manually? Anybody have an answer to that? Just to try to engage the audience a little bit here. And by the way, I really do thank you uh, folks for, for coming. Quite a nice audience. And by the way, this equity curve uh, is from uh, January 1, 2016 uh, to basically. Uh, yesterday, I believe, and it's shown a $20,000, including commissions, um, net P&L, okay? So this is a real uh, equity curve, not curve fit, uh, based on three lots in a 10, this, oh, sorry, this is, excuse me, this is a six lot um, equity curve, okay? Uh, we treat the NQ like a $10 uh, tick market, so we trade two as one. Um, any trade you see, uh, you know, like for one contract, we'll actually trade two. So three lot will trade six. So this is trading six contracts in the NQ on a seven wick Renko chart. Um, and, and since the beginning of the year, we would have realized $20,000 of profit. So why not trade this automatically? Um, and, you know, I, I, I need to ask this and ask this and ask this because this is one of the most deceptive practices out there. We could do it too, but we don't. Um, and, you know, I really need to get into talking about this and spending the, the few minutes I have to spend and, and ask why. Um, I like this. A few people, I give up. Why? Um, uh, yes, Frank, it is successful on the CL and the S. Um, uh, well, let me take that back. The ES, not so much. The CL, uh, for sure. Okay. Um, Nate, positioning. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, we, we, you know, we have to watch out for our margin. That's what I was looking for before. We can't take too much margin. Uh, you know, we have to trade within margin, but I'm, I'm trying to get to a point. And the point that I'm trying to make is people are going to tell you that their trades are backed up by positive ex ex expectancy equity curves. And, um, you know, cherry pick the dates. That's really not the case. This is January to the current day. I just picked the beginning of the year. Um, the reason is this, okay? Anybody understands the term fractal? It's a time frame. You know, we're using a seven work Drenko chart. If you used a, a one minute chart, a five minute chart, a 10 range bar chart, um, a 100 or a 233 tick chart, um, any type of fractal time frame, okay? Um, you're gonna find that, and this is the real reason that, that people don't fully automate um, their strategies is because they don't work over any given period of time. And the reason they don't work over any given period of time is because these fractals need to change. The volatility and range in the market on a daily basis don't allow you to enjoy this constant fractal number. Well, let's just use the word time frame. Fractal is a word that drives me crazy, but it doesn't allow you the pleasure or the the, the pleasure, um, whatever word you want to use, uh, doesn't allow you the ability to stay with this time frame um, for any period of time. If you do, you're going to start losing, 
Okay, your winners, your trade setups that used to work are going to start not working. And it's because your volatility and your daily range are changing constantly. Now, some people are going to say, well, when it starts losing, I'll just adjust it. All right. And you can do that. But here's the thing. You're going to take one heck of a boatload of losses. All right. Before you realize that months worth. Okay. And unless you can afford, and this is what bothers me and drives me nuts is if you can't tell, <laughs> a lot of people like to show, uh, you know, a block of trades uh, that are taken over a month's period of time or a quarter's period of time, and they start to lose and they say, you know what, I'm going to make some adjustments and I'm going to re-optimize my strategy to get new, fr new time frames. OK, where you get it re, you know, you, you re up the curb where it looks like this again and they start trading with that, those time frames. And now all of a sudden they look great and glorious. Well, guess what? They work for a while, then they stop working. OK, and we know this because Lance and I have personally spent eight months. We spent eight solid months working to try to take our trades that I showed you that we automate our our single trade that you decide whether you want to take or not by clicking on that button you know, that's automated. And we spent eight months trying to get it to work. But the two things we forgot, not forgot, like, you know, left it at home type of forgot, but we didn't include in the automation was a dynamic adjustment for either intra or daily volatility and range. And those are two of the most important. There's more, but those, those are two of the most important. And we know that that's what we need to do to get it to work. And here's the bottom line. People have that stuff working and they spend millions um, to get it done. It's in banks and hedge funds and things like that. We'll get it working. It's going to take time. And, you know, we have an agreement with our lifetime license holders that they'll have access to it. It's called an LOD, letter of direction strategy. We intend to run it through Ninja Brokerage um, to allow them to control it to have uh, their clients with our permission trade contracts, our lifetime subscribers for a small fee uh, per contract, but we don't have it ready yet because it's extremely hard to develop. Lance is one of the best programmers I've had a chance to do business with. He's a full-blown partner here at TFT, and I'm fully confident that you know he will uh, figure out how to implement um, dynamically uh, range and volatility. However, we refuse to play that game where we're in a trade room, we take one or two trades a day, and then we, we, we on a, an Excel spreadsheet, we list those trades. And uh, then after a month's worth of losing or you know whatever, uh, we start to get a losing record or near one um, on your risk to reward or your you know, profit and loss. Then we say, okay, it's time to adjust our time frames. Um, so that we get positive expectancy back. In real life, that doesn't work because in real life, when you want to make money as a professional trader and trade for a living, you need to trade more often and with either more size um, or you know more contracts or trade more often. And either most people can't afford um, the more size because you know you don't want to trade too much risk. We don't recommend beyond two percent of your account per trade. Um, but who can make 2%, who can make a living trading 2% of a 10 or $20,000 account if you're only taking, you know, 10 trades a month? Um, it's just not possible unless you can live with $20,000 a year or something like that. Um, I'm sorry, I can't. But this is an important thing to understand. This is why we don't let these uh, run automated in a fully automated fashion is because they don't work over any given period of time. Um, this is why we, uh, you know, give this to you in a spoon fed, take it now or pass on it per trade basis. Uh, we're working on the LOD side, which you'll hear that term LOD letter of direction. And once we get there, um, basically, uh, We'll have a big launch to uh, the members. We are we are limiting our lifetime membership, um, which is going to take me into the next section. Um, we also talk about how to use strategy grouping to protect your account. A lot of people, you know, these trades fire like this. Okay, when you know all these are indexes, I group them here. 
in yellow. All these are currencies, these are commodities, and these are bonds. Um, by the way, these are market structures, short, middle, long term. Green is buy, yellow is, uh, I'm sorry, red is sell. Uh, this is your divergence condition of Momo. Right now, everything's in line. This is actually mini charts. This is where a lot of the patenting lies. You're getting a look at all the charts uh, without them even being open of price, um, the mode and Momo, and also here, the net change. You can reset these at the open. So it tells you what's the strongest market, what the weakest market is. You can put an NT7 ATM in here uh, from your list. This is just a picture, so I can't include it. Is your last price traded, your order flow, uh, click the market, and here. So, But when you have it set right, you can only trade one of each if you want. So that means you, most you can have on, in this case, is four trades. Um, we can set it up so that you can only have one trade, or you can have 12, or you can have whatever. So we have a lot of power in here in the grouping so you can only have one index, one currency, one commodity, one bond, or you can have two indexes, so on and so forth, okay? Um, let me just get to some of these questions here. Um, what is the uh, fractal lines? Yes, lines. Okay. What is the stop on each signal? Um, we recommend the stop varies. Um, it depends. It's dynamic. Uh, you know, depending on support and resistance, we like to use recent support and resistance lines as stop lines. But in general, uh, we like to use a two brick stop uh, with a four brick target. So it's two to one. So the stop is kind of uh, matching our target. And we try to hit that two to one reward to risk unless support or resistance is in our way of getting there. Then if we're really, really close, we take profit at that support or resistance. Generally, our brick size is anywhere from four to eight, Wick Dranko, generally in the six to eight range. So that's six to eight ticks, our price bars. So our stop is anywhere from 12 to four, excuse me, 12 to 16 ticks is the general range, just to answer that question. Um, uh, and since you, you hit, all, you, you nail all the market changes constantly, um, pretty much you see everything here. We can also tell globally when things are happening. Um, does it work with equ equities? Yes, it does, but only to trade in equities. Uh, Lance, I'm correct on that, right? Because I don't actually trade equi equities with this myself. And most people that I know that use this with equities trade options. So they're not executing from here. Um, I don't I don't know if Lance can, can speak here, but oh, yeah, he does here. Yes, it works uh, with stocks too. How well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I got you there. How well is it working Just, for us? Uh, yeah, you, you should. Um, it, it should It'll work fine um, with all those in terms of uh, executions. It, it'll be handled the same way um, that futures are. Yeah, uh, um, Bethany, yes, for, for us, like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Lance, I didn't mean to interrupt. There's a little lag here. Um, yeah, Forex is just like futures. Okay, um, what's the success rate? Okay, uh, Frank, uh, you say, you know, I won't like this question. No problem at all. Um, we're somebody coming in, learns the method once they get beyond. Um, Let's just talk in SIM, okay? In SIM trading, uh, an average success rate for a trader uh, without using strategies is somewhere around 50 to 60%. But keep in mind, that's at two to one. So even at 50% two to one, you're making good money, okay? Um, I, we have people doing a lot better than that. We have people actually doing worse than that. And they're still making good money, okay? The, the, the thing about success rate, it's not how successful you are. It's the random distribution of wins and losses that really matters. So we believe in internal money management, meaning you know if you have so many losses a day, quit. If you have so many wins a day, quit. Um, you know things like that. So does it control option execution? If it doesn't uh, do stocks, it, it doesn't control option execution. You can use any options platform from anybody out there. Um, it does do stocks. Peter S. Will this ever be able to take custom indicators? No. Um, this is the way it is, and uh, it's a trend following trades product. You can add indicators to it if you want, but they will never be part of the strategy. Um, and, and Julie, if you want it, you know how to get it. Uh, let me just go through here. I know we're running out of time. This is the perfect time to get started. Um, crawl, walk, run, fly. It's a little logo motto we like to, to use. You know, you got to crawl, you got to join. Um, a lot of people like lifetime membership. They know it's limited. Uh, it's the over time, least expensive way to get in. A lot of people like to come in as a lease. We offer it all. Um, you know, 
start with the chart, educate, learn. Don't be in a rush. This is not a put it on the chart. It's not an indicator. It's a whole methodology. We're a company. We teach people how to trade. Um, this is I was talking to Patrick and uh, Juanita earlier. We really should be under the educational part of uh, Ninja Trader, not the add-ons. Um, we teach people how to trade. This automation and all that is stuff that we've been working towards and with Lance on board, eventually we'll conquer. Um, but, you know, computer programming and automation, there's a lot of caveats to it, more than just programming. It involves trading and emotion and, you know, removing emotion, things like that. And as far as we're concerned, that's the fly point, okay? Having said that, um, you know, we do have a webinar special, okay? We've incorporated it into our purchase tab on our website, okay? Um, I will take you there. Uh, in a second, but right now, this is uh, where it's at. These are our specials for the webinar. They will be good till midnight on Sunday. Uh, this is the regular pricing. Here's our specials. After that, they're gone. Uh, Ninja Trader was nice enough to bring us in to, and invite you folks into this webinar. Uh, we also ran mailers of, through our own opt-in list, but we're going to offer this uh, special. It's basically 25% off. We don't believe in artificial inflated pricing. We also don't believe in insulting existing members with artificially inflated discounts. We just don't do that. 25% is the most we've ever offered as a discount, and it's probably the most you'll ever see. Once our lifetime fills up, um, we're a little bit of ways, not going to lie to you and say we're almost there and, and all that. We're a little bit of ways, but I know we're going to get there once we hit our lifetime because we don't want to slip markets. Uh, when we use fixed um, time charts like Wick Drenko, our entries are at certain prices in time and we can only adjust the time frames once we release our newly adjusted time frames you know for the week and eventually we're going to do for the day and with automation you know it's going to be a certain limit on the number of contracts that can be traded um you know it's we don't want to overrun the strategy essentially so this is where the specials lie um the differences between the ct and the ama the ama includes a ct chart trading um, the AMA's Advanced Market Administrator, let me get to you. This is actually, I'll show you the, this is a live platform. I'm going to hit play here, okay? And this is uh, Market Replay, okay, from Friday. I was just able, because the market was closed, I did this right before. Uh, this is 10 times. You'll notice gold here, or 6E. Um, or let me just here, I'll just click on this. Order pending. You see how it lights this up? See, it automatically moved it up. A brick, when the price goes deeper, it puts a sell limit. This is also the strategies are lit up now, so I can close order this. Order canceled. I can order click on this. Pending. Notice the bracket orders. It means if it hits support or resistance first, it'll fill there. If it hits method entry, it'll fill there. This way it won't miss the trade. Okay, we always try to get the best fill first, but if we can't, at least we'll get filled. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a winner or loser, to be honest with you. I'm just trying to show you fills. This shows you our closed PL. I was playing with it earlier. I took a YM trade. So you can click through, and I can click through any of these charts here while all this is going on. And I could show you there's the DAX. I could show you the 6B, crude oil, gold, bonds, uh, all this. So while this is going on, I'm just going to drag in our website, and I want to show you here. Um, a trend following trades website because I know I'm basically out of time. Um, let me just show you this real quick. So uh, the most important part for us, if you want to go to the purchase order page, canceled. okay, by the way, it canceled that order automatically because it went outside of the parameters, which I'll show you. But you go into the purchase page here. This is CT2. I'll use this as an example. And then here are the AMA futures and then AMA, uh, all of them. Okay. Uh, the CT2, you essentially click on this. It'll bring you a little explanation of the video. You get through uh, here. It tells you what you're getting. Here's the webinar special. Uh, you click on buy now. It gets through the non-disclosure, uh, non-competition type of things, and then you hit accept, and it'll take you to uh, your basically your purchase button. You click this, and I suggest you print out uh, the NDA, and this will take you to PayPal Stop um, where you would execute your payment there. So that's basically where that's at. Visit our website. You can take a look through. Um, the members area is locked out for members only, the learning center. Um, 
you know, there's, uh, you see it's protected here. So this is for members only. Uh, we do have some partners, obviously NinjaTrader uh, is being our most important partner. And then we have some links for uh, computers and we have all our weekly sessions we record. Um, we do sometimes once, sometimes twice a week. We have a core trading strategy explained and learning center has all of our recorded weekly sessions. Then we go into an area. Uh, let me just log in, just give you a little peek here. Uh, I'll log in and then I'll show you uh, in the learning center. We have a s area, six areas boiled down to getting started, downloading, um, understanding, uh, you know, futures chart, uh, CT2, the explanations, uh, understanding from the ground up, but, you know, AMA. So basically one through six here, and then we have additional learning areas, resources, the core strategy, and then we have some very specific differences with trading Forex. And whenever we work on something, we just put this up, this under construction. doesn't mean you can't go in it. It doesn't mean it's not still active. Uh, it just means that there's something being added. That's all that means. So uh, actually in this first one that's getting started, this video is why 95% of traders lose. Um, and it's a really good video. I was very emotional on my side because people think they can actually buy an ATM and put it on their desk uh, and have it spit out money. Um, it talks about our miss, mission statement here. So spend some time on this website. It'll tell you a little bit about us as a company, uh, what we try to do, and uh, we constantly update, um, you know, things here. So, and then here, if you go into TFT Talk and under announcements, um, you'll see here some of the latest stuff. And for those members, uh, click to view the recording. If you have access, it'll give you the recording. If you don't, it'll say, please log in. All right, and then uh, that's essentially uh, the website and where that's at. Um, I did want to get back to this, uh, 6E. We took this trade, got stopped out. Uh, you can see here, got stopped out just above uh, support and resistance area. No need to take any further pain than that. Wanted to show you that, and I could let this run and wait for another light to pop up. And that's all you're doing here. Essentially, is waiting for a light to light up, and then you click that light, and it'll take that trade. Okay, and that's according to... Um, a variety of rules set according to the strategy, but it's not going to take them unless it passes all your rules with divergence, you know, inside out, outside in, things like that, things that we teach you. Uh, cumulative market delta, market structure, you have short, middle, long term, divergence condition, all this, you know, and, and things of the sort. So let me get some of these questions here. I can see them flying by, but... Um, I can only see so many. Uh, um, do you have? Uh, do you only have one strategy? Um, the answer to that question is yes. Uh, currently, we have. Uh, well, actually, no. Uh, I'm sorry. The strategy that we have. Uh, well, yes and no. You go into here. Um, right now, the strategy that we're dealing with when it comes to the setup strategy you can actually determine how you want it to fire. Currently, the release that exists, this is to show you what we do. The release that exists with the existing members stops right here, okay? Right here. It talks about, do you want to use the strategy? If not, it'll just light up the pullbacks, you know, before the strategy existed with these lights here. Okay, I'll just click on this. I can't, this is open, but this is what the members have now. Um, you can, by the way, every setup can be, you know, a visual, can have a visual and sound. Um, we can enter our support and resistance line with an offset because so many times support and resistance gets hit, gets hit to the tick. So you can have a tick offset. Um, you can require shaded direction. That means do you only want to trade in the direction of cumulative delta? Like if you want to go short here, it wouldn't. Uh, we have required secondary time frame. We always have two time frame charts running. You don't see the second one because it's built in, meaning you see this, this red surrounding of this green bar. That means that the longer time frame is still short. Okay, we actually colored the background uh, with the longer time frame. You can also see it here in this red bar. Um, then we have uh, require NLSSR, near left side support and resistance. There are these swing dots, so we look for left side, then how many swing dots back do you want to go? And then how far vertically do you want it to be? And then, you know, do we require the bar to be closed a certain way? Now we're working on adding all these to the next release. Okay. 
which are the pullback trade count, the number of 4E trades, the number of you know, standard trades. Do we need short-term, middle, long-term? Can we override long-term with secondary, you know, if, if they're, both charts are in alignment? Do we have a stop threshold, meaning if, if, if our two bricks stop or if whatever this input is exceeds the near support and resistance line, do you want to take the trade or do you want to ignore it? Um, you know, do you want to show the entries? Uh, I have this set to true, so it's going to show you these are signal entries, but if I maximize this chart, it'll show you the little diamonds. Um, I can't find any right now, but it won't just show you the actual entries. It'll show you um, the little diamonds. It's it's not showing what I, what I wanted to show you, so I have something else turned off, but you see these little spheres. This is resistance. This is support right on the right-hand side of the chart, and the green is... Uh, support and the red is resistance. So when price comes up to here, it's going to want to go short, assuming everything else here gives us permission. Right now, it does not. And then the red is inside out. It's starting to things of that nature. So we teach all of this. It's kind of hard to go over, but let's look at uh, bonds. These are little triangles. They're on here. Okay. And I was talking about. Um, and where are we at now? We're at about 10.04. Um, let's see the Russell here, you know, we're red background, so I don't think we're going to take that long. There's, there's a lot of rules that we have set that allow you to either take the trade or not take, take the trade. Um, I could speed things up to try to uh, get things going here, uh, on the NQ. Um, let me just speed things up a little here. Just want to get one trade off here for you. And, um, See if we can order pending. All right. I have no idea what that did, but you see, I was able to uh, basically light this up. I went long order when it's filled. short. Shouldn't do that. Um, but I did anyway. So um, I'm just going to move my stop up here below that. Stop swing point. filled. So you see, you can move your stops around and targets. So, you know, again, I'm not executing strategy orders. I'm just executing any pullback. That's what the stop limit and stop market is. Use a stop market when you're in a fast market. Where you know if you ask to fill a limit, it might not um, as it trades through it. If a trade triggered, it'll give you this dark green, meaning if you go to try to execute it, okay, it may come back order to it. Pen order filled. Okay, there it happened to be on top of it. Okay, anytime you want to close, order just hit canceled. the close button. Order target filled. Okay, and here uh, we can again use this. Order or canceled. Order pen order canceled. Okay, you see that? I used this, the strategy button that time. Um, I got this fill here. All right, we're going short here. Again, I have you know, no idea what it's doing. I'm just clicking on buttons to show you the interface and, um, you know, how it works, clicking on uh, buttons that light up. Uh, there are uh, the, the three months, uh, the lease. Yes, we also, we consider a three-month lease kind of our trial. Um, it takes a little bit of time to understand, you know, again, we teach an entire methodology and a way to trade from the inside out, meaning we like to do trend following trades. Um, we don't like to fade trends, although you can like watch at any time right now. I see like this trend line up here. Let's say I want to short the market. Uh, we're in the NQ. I just click Quarter on this filled. and I go short the market according to this ATM. OK, so I just did that randomly. All right, and I'm gonna move my stop, my target up to here, just because I wanna to try to hit this double bottom, and I'll leave my stop just above this swing high. Oops, stop, it's stop filled. Out. Okay, so I was just showing you a way to just get into the market. You can also get in this way. If I wanna go short, I right Order click on pending. last price. I can drag in. Order filled. A limit entry, okay, or I can leave it somewhere for it to uh, move. You notice when this went orange, Ah, figures. <laughs> I was just going to click on this to move the break even. Um, let's just get filled. stopped out of this and let's go uh, long on this. Okay, we'll go long. Order filled. At market. And Stop filled. <laughs> uh, now it's going to stop. This is what you do when you chase the market. Let's just go long again Order here. filled. I just want to show you this. This will light up orange and then watch. I'll click it. Stop filled. And it moved it to break even. Okay, so there's a lot of functionality built inside of here um, that you can execute never having to need to touch 
any of the execution capabilities uh, that are built into NT. All right. Um, so how can you learn more about this and see it in action? Um, you can, if you want, um, I can demonstrate this uh, for people. If you want to see a more close up and personal, uh, just drop us an email and we can set up a one on one and I can through Skype or something like that, go to a meeting, uh, show this to you in action and you know, get more into exactly how all this works rather than me like clicking here. Um, watch, I'll do this. OK, uh, see market replay uh, can't be placed because it's above. It won't normally what it does. Uh, this is the DAX. I'll put this in. Normally, Order pending. when um, these lights turn dark, you click it, it puts an order in, and it waits for price to come to it. So you see now how it automatically moves us back? Watch. If it comes down order anymore, canceled. if it came down too far, it just canceled the order. It's in sell anyway, so we really shouldn't be going long at this point in time. And the NQ again. Order pending. I'll just click this to go short. I clicked the strategy button this time. Order so canceled. now it's meeting more criteria for this light to light up. All right. And then let's see. Well, the, the DX here, um, I'll just click the Order strategy pending. button. Okay. And it's doing the same thing. So now you can see I do have grouping on, so I can only go one index, one commodity, uh, and one bond, as well as one currency. So let me just see some of the questions Order here. Canceled. A lot going on at once. Um, our trial period is the lease. We don't actually have a trial period uh, because of the quantity of material that we actually make available to you, um, as well as you know the what's involved in it, the educational side of it. Stop Once we filled. make that available to you, um, we you know you've seen a lot of what we teach and everything like that, and you can essentially learn uh, how to trade you know with that alone. So we don't offer a trial. Once you get in the members area. Uh, you've learned a lot of what we have to teach. So I'll just click this. Um, okay, now see, it's not letting me take this trade because I'm in the NQ, all right? If anybody says, oh, I'm close to target, just drag target that in filled. and it'll just fill your target, okay, just to give you some profit. Um, again, I'm not after P&L here. I'm just trying to show how you can, you know, work and manipulate uh, the AMA. I'm in market replay on 12 markets. Um, never really done that before. I found out 15 minutes before the session that uh, um, I totally forgot uh, that if I went to show something live, I have to do a market replay. So I don't believe in market replay for two reasons. People speed it up. It doesn't show you real time market speed. Um, and that's really the reason that, that, we, that I personally don't like it. I like the slow, fast, slow, fast because it gives you, uh, you know, a taste of how the market really trades. So let me just look at the CL here. Let's give order it order pending. Again, the, the dual bracket order. This is an OCO order. Once one gets filled, it'll cancel the other one out. And then let's just go to the NQ here. Give it a order pending. This is the second order in a run. The first order one, canceled. Did actually go to profit. So order this one's canceled. Go. By the way, if I want to go to break even, I click this. Went to break even automatically. I mean, by my manual discretion. All right. And so I have to. Um, that's one way to put it. Is it, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Xavier? Target um, stop filled. It's, uh, I don't know if you want to put it that way. We were down quite a bit. Uh, we're coming back. I, like, again, I really have no idea what these markets are doing. So look, I'll put this in here. Order pending. See how it wants to, it needs to come back now. Um, if you went past the stop limit, Order it'll come back. Filled. Now it filled it. Uh, this one I have set as a three brick stop. I don't want that. I want a two brick stop. So it's either going to stop me out or it's going to come down and I'll put my target. Stop filled. That stop me out. So again, and I'm green background, so I'm just taking these random trades. Notice how they all like to light up on the indexes at once. Um, what we like to do usually is if you want to go short, go short the weakest market. That's what these net change percentages are good for. Uh, if you want to go long, go long the strongest market in an index. So you could also kind of see what's going on here. We don't want to go short into reverse divergence. This is the FESX. This is kind of like the German uh, ES, if you want to call it that. Um, so, but a lot of people like the movement. Uh, it's very slow and very uh, smooth. So we take a, it takes a lot of the noise out of the markets. But you can see these signals here. 
uh, on the NQ. We'd be filling at resistance. These, these triangles are actually turned on the NQ here. And this shows you where you'd be filled. Um, that's what these are in real time. That's why you didn't see them before. This is a real time tool. Um, it's also a back testing tool. So I'm going to leave this again. And I want to thank you, um, Ninja Trader, for allowing us to present. Anybody has any questions, don't hesitate uh, to shoot us an email. Give us a call. Uh, you have our number. Contact us anyway. Skype, I'm TFT John. Just please don't ring. Uh, shoot us an IM. And uh, you know we'll either call you back or say it's okay to call. We are traders first and foremost, educators second, and then system developers third. So just please keep that in mind when calling during the trading day. We trade generally between 8 a.m. and 11.30 to latest 1 p.m. Eastern. So after that, we do our support uh, work and, and through the night and into the weekend. So just keep that in mind when you call. Um, if you're out in the West Coast or if you're out of the country, uh, or around the other side of the world. Half of our mem members are from outside the United States, so we're qu quite a diverse group. And having said that, I'm pretty much done and open for questions. And if not, I'm sure Ninja Trader is going to say <laughs> that uh, it's time. So um, right here, it looks like I pretty much hit all the questions, unless I missed some from earlier. And I thank you guys, Sylvia and Lance, for your help also uh, with the webinar.